Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading a creepypasta. Call it Trust. This creepypasta was suggested by Sam V. Thank you, Sam V, for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. If anybody else has any creepypasta suggestions or scary stories, let me know in the comments down below. You could also let me know in my Discord or my social media accounts, Instagram. And if I read your suggestion, I will give you a shout out in the next video. So again, thank you Sam V for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. I open my eyes and look it up at a ceiling. I'm sitting in a chair, can't move. What feels like a belt is holding my head in place to the backrest. I move my eyes down. I can see most of another man's face there. His head is also strapped down. His eyes are darting left and right. Teeth clenched, struggling to free himself. I make my own attempts, knowing they would be useless, but trying anyways. The chair is bolted to the floor. It won't move. The man is perfectly close to me. If we could move, we could probably touch. I'm scared. I have no idea how this will play out. Hey, I say. You know what's going on here? No. I went to sleep and woke up tied to a fucking chair with some asshole in front of me who's apparently in the same fucking situation. Stupid question, I suppose. Can you move anything besides your eyes and mouth? He tries again. Just my fingers and toes. Damn much that can do. Okay. I sigh. Looks like we're stuck here until whoever did this decides to do what they are doing. What's your name? Mike. I'm Chuck. I'm curious about this man. Why is he here with me? Can you think of any reason you're here? Did you hurt anyone? Steal from anyone? Anything? Man, I never done anything. He cries. Couple speeding tickets. That's it. You think someone would at least tell you why they kidnap you? I can't think of anything either. I said truthfully. I looked at him. Trying to think if I know him. Or if I had ever even seen him before today. I hadn't. Any chance you recognize me? Don't think so. Alright, we're two innocent strangers. I guess it's just random. Pick the first person they happen to get. But for what? I looked around as much as I can. The ceiling is high and I can't see any walls. There is a spotlight high overhead illuminating us. All my fingers can feel are the edges of the armrest. I can't hear anything beyond my own breathing and the attempted movements of my newfound companion. What could have brought us here? Is this torture? Is there some sort of psychotic force that brought us together? Whatever the answer is, I feel it in my gut that someone's going to die. Hopefully, not me. Shit, I just cut myself, I think. Something hard and sharp is around my right arm. I look back down at him. It's a strain to keep my eyes pointed down so far. He's staring at me, panicking, mouth wide open and panting. I move my arms as much as I can. It feels like I'm strapped or something holding down my left arm and metal bands are around my right. What the hell? 
What are they going to... Just then, a loud screech. Deafening sounds. Speaker cracks. A booming voice. Good evening, gentlemen. As you have no doubt discovered, you have been restrained and are now part of our little game. Between you is a table. On the table is a gun. In some time the restraints on your right arm will be released. The first to get the gun and kill the other will win their own life. An associate will put you to sleep and you will be released. A free man. The other will be disposed of and you will never be bothered again. If neither of you shoot the gun within 5 minutes of your restraints being released, a lethal electrical current will be sent through your chairs killing you both. Quite painful in fact. It's better for one to live than both to die. Silence. We waited for the restraints to be released. It doesn't come. What the fuck? Chuck? I guess we'll have to wait. Maybe they want us to get to know the man we have to kill. I don't want to kill anyone. But I sure as hell don't want to die. I yelled. Well, would you rather kill me or die? That's the important question. Is your life worth the death of someone else? Could you live your life knowing that you murdered someone just so you can live? No, he said. I'd rather die than kill someone, but I'd rather live and not kill even more. I feel the same, Mike. But unless you think we could untie ourselves in five minutes with only one hand, he was silent for a moment, then started whispering. Yeah, what if we could? What? I yelled. How can we trust that we actually have five minutes? How can I trust you? If I reach over to untie myself, how do I know you won't go for the gun? Like I said, I'd rather die than kill someone. A shot that us both living is better than the alternative. I guess it's the only way to not be murdered. I smiled. Even though he can't see me. I trust you. Can you trust me too? So that's our plan. We'll attempt to free ourselves and hope we can do it in time. I know I'm not going to be getting anything off that table before I free myself, and I really think that Mike won't try to kill me. I start going over plans to get myself free. Would it be easier to undo the other arm first? Would I need to see my other arm to free it? If not, I would need to remove my head restraint so I could look. But could I do it with only one hand? I decided that when the time came, I would just go with my instincts. It feels like there are three straps on each limb. One on my head, one under my shoulder, and one around my waist. So not counting the ones on the right arm. That's my thought for a second. Twelve straps? Or belts? Or whatever they are. I'm sure we have enough time. We wait. So you got a family or anything Chuck? No, not really, I said. My parents are around and I see them every once in a while. I have few friends. No one really close though. You? I have a girlfriend and a kid and the rest of the family. I really want to get back to them. I just got a new job, planning on getting a house. Things are going pretty well. Man, why did this have to happen now? Why does this happen at all? Why are people so fond of death? 
The life of someone like me against someone like him doesn't seem fair. I still want to live though. I don't want I don't want to kill him. But I'm not going to offer myself as a sacrifice so that he can live. The only thing a reasonable person would do is our plan. We talk for a while. He tells me about where he grew up, what he does for a living, and how he met his girlfriend. About how wonderful his daughter is. He starts getting choked up and I take over. I talk about just anything. School, friends, my plans in life. We keep talking about the lives we very well might lose until we can't bear to talk about it anymore. We wait for what seems like an hour in silence. Still, nothing happens. Mike started yelling, Hey, come on. We're going to sit here all day. Nothing in reply but silence. Mike is shaking, as much as he could anyways. I want to see my kid again. I want to get out of here. Mike, just relax. Think about how we're going to get out of here. Think about getting your other arm free, your head, your chest, your legs. All right, all right. I'm cool. He doesn't seem cool. We wait some more. Every time I look down, Mike seems worse, talking to him. Get him out of his own head, but he won't talk back. I wait a while, hoping that we can both be free of this accursed game. As I look at him, it feels to me that I've been here for years, just sitting here, looking across this table. Eventually he starts muttering, but I can hear him. We just assume that we can get out of here? They could have locked us in. They could have people attack us the minute we walk out. I don't even know where we are. Could be in the middle of a desert. Or Antarctica for all I know. Hell, there could be some six feet to the left. And I wouldn't know. They could be listening in the whole time and know what we plan to do. I don't even know what's holding me down. They might have to cut me out of here and there's no way to get out with just one hand. Someone has to die. And it sure as hell won't be me. Mike. I try to reassure him. Focus. Focus on getting out. No one has to die. I know it. You have to know it too. Twelve straps. That's it. We walk out. Finally free. Click. Restraint is released. I lift my right arm to the belt that's on my head and start to undo it. I see Mike reach across the table. I know I can't win. Sorry Chuck, I have a family. I've got more to live for than you. Don't do this. There's plenty of time. Don't go home to your family a murderer. Fuck you. The belt on my head is loose. I look down quickly. His hand is waving back and forth on the table, trying to find the gun. It's not there. Five years. I say, standing up. Reaching for the kill switch. Five years of endless variations. And they always reach for the gun. 